Hello my friends, welcome to Grace My Space. I am Sarah and today I have a really fun, special to me project that I get to share with you. We did a really fun surprise for my kiddos for Christmas last minute. Two weeks before Christmas, I decided, you know, it would be really fun to create this awesome rec room for our kids because we already planned to get them a ping pong table. But as projects go, it spiraled quite significantly. So today I wanna to take you along on the entire project from start to finish. And really the main theme of today's video is just taking into consideration areas of your home that you might be underutilizing. We have this awesome, huge space in our basement that has literally stored junk for five years. I feel like a lot of people have that junk room that really just needs a little bit of creativity, some forethought, some cleaning and organization and reimagining how the space could be used. And that is what we did. And I'm really excited to show it to you. Welcome to the blue room, affectionately called the blue room because the floors are blue. We are very original. This space has been the catch-all room for five years. The kids have played down here. We've had like rollerblading area slash workout area, but for the most part, it just kind of held junk and was really underutilized for the size of the space that it is. So. We decided to get the kids a ping pong table and when I started thinking about it, I thought this is the perfect opportunity to make this a usable space and not just a catch-all. On the other side, we actually have our furnace area and that really needed a lot of attention, mostly just organization, and so I decided to tackle that too. Now what you didn't see is that yesterday I spent the entire day, oh my, that's heavy cleaning the crud out of this place. I carried so much to the dump, took care of so many paint cans. I'm just looking for spiders. And now I have to clear the entire floor of everything so I can paint it. Live with your legs. Okay. So I started by clearing out all the junk. Look how pretty this twin bed frame is antique I totally forgot I had it it's been sitting down here for five years what should I do with it once I removed everything off of the floor and put it in the other side of our basement, which is basically just a big rearranging game I vacuumed everything really well and then I mopped everything really well this side of the basement was not previously painted, so I took some extra care since it's raw concrete. And then I got to work on the entire floor to repaint it and make it look like one cohesive space and also just to cover up all these nasty spills on the raw concrete. I also painted all of the blue trim, which I have disliked for or five years and not done anything about, and it was just a good time for a complete refresh. Day two is in the books. I got the paint done on the trim on the top on one half of the room and then some of the paint on the bottom and the other half of the room is just going to wait until I can clear it out. It's a much bigger project than I anticipated. The trim looks so much better white. It makes me like the corrugated metal a little bit better. And now you can see the difference between two coats and one covering up that blue and this trim will get done once I can move this stuff and put it back on our freshly painted flooring. All right, everything is clean and dry. Clean as concrete can get, I guess. I'm actually, this is raw concrete, nothing's been done to it. I'm using Valspar Concrete Bonding Primer. I have no idea if it's good or not. First time I've ever used it. The only brand that was available in the store that I stopped in because this was a very last minute project. So I won't be able to recommend or not recommend it until maybe five years later when I see if it's held up well. All right, I just start by trimming everything. There is a lot to trim around. 
And I just read the directions, something that you should likely do before you start a project, and found out that I have four hours to apply the top coat after this has been applied. I wasn't planning to do the top coat today, so my plans just changed. And if you don't apply the top coat within four hours, you have to re-crime. <laughs> so, here I go. Here I go. This is the paint that I'm using. It was all they had in the store. So once again, I'll let you know in five years if it holds up. I'm gonna tell you what, being on the floor on concrete, it's hard on the body. It's a nice enough color. We all say that when it's all over my floor. My method of choosing this paint color was see a sample, hold it in a little bit of shade so the fluorescent light wasn't on it, and choose it. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't recommend buying paint that way, but this is called Coastal Villa, and I like how it turned out. Hopefully this is where a really big transformation happens. And hopefully it doesn't just look like dirt on my ground. I never know. Spin my roller, come on. Paint on this side. I was actually really impressed by how this went on. It covered really, really nicely and was really easy to apply. Didn't have any issues, which was a great bonus. One coat done. The lighting is just awful in here, but this room, I don't think I even need a second coat. I might put one just to be safe, but it covered really, really nicely. Can't even tell because the lighting's so bad. This room looks great as well. This is the one that had all of the stains all over it. There's one spot right here where it definitely needs a second coat. But underneath of here, there was a huge, huge issue. You can't even see anything, even with just one coat, and this was on bare concrete. So I'm really happy with the coverage. Definitely gonna do a second coat in here. Next, I moved on to building kind of like a game central for a dartboard, an axe throwing board, and some of the ping pong table storage and organization. I preconditioned the wood and then I stained it. I used Special Walnut by Minowax, which is one of my favorite stains. I really enjoy staining wood. <laughs> it's a funny thing to enjoy, but look at how beautiful even like basic plywood can be when you bring out the different wood grain and the character in it. And stain is what makes that all show up. So the side pieces here are going to have eight foot runs, which means that I need to leave three quarters on each side of my frame for this piece to butt up to. Alright, I'm going to apply some wood glue to this. This wood glue is actually a lot stronger than nails are. And when you're applying wood glue, don't just run a bead, you need to spread it out. Cover the entire surface, that's probably not enough. Since this project was unplanned, I only had enough face frame boards to do the top and bottom, and then I had to add the side boards of the frame later on down the road after I could get to the store. And then let's see, perfection. 
Okay, so Aaron actually carried this in for me, so I don't really know how heavy it is. I just know that it looked hard. So, it's heavy. I need a plan. I don't think I'll be able to lift it by myself, like just, you know, brute strength. So, I'm going to try and work a little smarter and hopefully not damage my brand new painted floors. How many of these ceilings are eight feet tall? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh! I thought they were eight feet tall. Rule number one of DIY, measure, measure things, okay? I had to cut off the bottom of this to make it fit the height of our basement, which was not a big deal in the end. I think it took me about 20 minutes to cut it off and then reattach the bottom part of the frame, and then we were good to go. Unfortunate that I could have avoided it, but not a big deal. I never got this far before, so. Since the upper half does not have studs, it's just concrete behind panels, and then the bottom has metal, I didn't have anywhere to mount all these different games. So this board serves not only as a mounting station for these items, but also as a backdrop to protect our walls from flying darts and axes, and a great way to organize all the different pieces that I needed for the ping pong table and the games that I wanted in here. All right, let's see how it works. I've never done this before. <laughs> it's gonna work. I can't get it in there, but it's gonna work. Once I finally got to the store to get my side pieces for the frame, I cut them to size and then I just installed them the same way I did the top with glue and then a nail gun. I stained them to match and call it good. Ideally, I wouldn't do it in this order, but it ended up working out just fine. Everything that you saw in the room at the beginning of this video that was a cluttered mess, I either tossed, donated, sold, or put into a better organized space in my home. Final touch is a big area rug so our feet stay warm while we're playing ping pong. It's been a while since I've used my Cricut and there is no light down here whatsoever. But it's gonna be a cool little sign, I think, up here. It says game on. I like a challenge. I think these cute little finishing touches make it extra special, and I really hope that the kids enjoy the effort that was put into making this a fun space. And now, here's a little audio from the reveal. <laughs> I love that, children. Look behind you. Look like that. What? Mama built all that. No, yeah, awesome. When? No. <laughs> Whoa, nice return. <laughs> We've used this space every single day since the reveal, and I'm so happy with how it turned out as a hangout spot for our family to just connect. Now, I know that today's project was not necessarily like this huge reveal. You know, when I was looking on Pinterest for some ideas for this project, all I could find were these multi-million dollar houses with enormous rec rooms that had, you know, like perfectly polished. There was nothing wrong with them. They were not in dungeon basements. They had full windows everywhere and they had the most top of the line pool tables and bars everywhere with, you know, like the full kitchen and it was intense. 
and it immediately made me feel like, oh, should I even share this project? Which was silly because most of us don't have spaces that are huge and like a whole wing of our home to create a family environment in. So I hope that you enjoyed seeing how this project came together in a real common home. It was not extravagant. It was not expensive. It was not over the top, but I hope that it maybe just inspired you to kind of look at your own spaces and say, what could I do that would be really affordable and fairly quick to do to rethink how this space is used and how it can serve my family better. Now I thought it'd be kind of fun to ask you, do you have an area like this in your home and what could you do with it? Brainstorm in the comments with me. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure and hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more to come.